Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about radicals and rational exponents. So let's start with the definition. Radicals are sometimes also called root. They look like this. We have an n, we have a radical, we have an a. So this n we call the index or the root, and then this little symbol is called the radical. A is called the radicand, so the radicand is what we're trying to take the root of. This is also equal to a to the 1 over n. So we have these two formats. The left one is called the radical form, and the right one is called an exponential form. So this exponential form has a rational exponent. Really, really important. And if you're going to take many classes in mathematics, say you're headed toward calculus, we want to be able to write all radicals as rational exponents. So let's start with the one you're probably most familiar with, which is called the square root. For the square root, the index is 2, but we usually don't write it. So if you see this radical a, it just means the square root of a. Let's look at some ones you probably know, like the square root of 4 is 2. I don't write plus or minus 2, I just write 2. Same thing, square root of 100 is 10, so I don't write plus or minus 10, I just write 10. A common place to see this is when solving the Pythagorean theorem. So it says if we have a right triangle and we know two of the sides, we can find the third side. So particularly this time I gave you the two legs. So I have 8 squared plus 10 squared is equal to this missing side squared. 8 squared is 64, 10 squared is 100, that's going to be x squared. So I add 100 and 64, that's 164, that's x squared, and here's where the radical comes in. It does the opposite, so the square root of x squared is just x, and the square root of 164 is a number we're not really familiar with. So we're going to use technology. Let's grab a calculator. And the calculator I usually use is Desmos because it's online. It's easy to show in my videos. So when I'm first looking, you don't see anything. Let's open the keyboard and you're looking for this square root symbol. So I do the square root of 164 and it tells me it's 12.806. We're going to approximate a little bit. Another thing I can do is type SQRT. It will change it to a square root and I put 164. There's the same number. The third thing I could do is just type 164 and use the fact that the square root would be x to the 1 half. So, so the square root is really a 1 half power, so I can hit shift 6, that makes it go up, and I can put in 1 half. If you wanted to, you could also type 164 and go to the keyboard, and there's this a to the b, that makes it go up, and I do 1 half. So lots of choices here, but they all say the same thing that the square root of 164 is about 12.81. Be careful with radicals. Sometimes you'll see questions that say give the exact answer, which means you want the answer to still be a square root if needed. If it says approximate, then grab the calculator and give a good approximation. So the next one says the square root of 49x squared. I know the square root of 49 is 7. The square root of x squared is x. Now you really want to be careful. It kind of depends on what book you're using to study. Some books will require you to write 7 times the absolute value of x, saying that we need this number to be positive. Other books will say things like, assume x is positive, and then you don't have to worry about it, and you can just write 7x to begin with. But really do watch what's happening, because you may have one class that they get to do the 7x, and the next class you jump to, they want the absolute value, so I just want you to know this can occur. Square root of 64y squared is just going to be ay. And then our next few examples are not going to reduce perfectly. So when I'm looking at this square root of 12, I'm going to think, well, square root of 12. Could I factor that? And when I do factor it, can I factor it with a perfect square? So let's write it as 4 times 3. Square root of 4 is 2, and I have the 3 left over, so it's going to stay underneath the radical. Y to the fifth, well, Y doesn't represent any particular number, so let's just say that represents 5 Y's. The idea of a square root is it takes 2's, so let's group by 2. The first set of y's becomes a y, the second set also becomes a y. So I have y times y is y squared, and then I have the square root of y. Let's try that with 125. So if I look at 125, well I know 5 goes in, which would give me 25. That's nice. Square root of 25 is 5, and then I leave the other 5 under the radical. Then the next one, the square root of 9 is 3. But then I have this s, so there's 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 t's. Every pair gets circled. So there's 1 s, there's 1 s. I have 1, 2, 3 sets of t's, and then 1 that's going to stay under the radical. So I have 3 s squared t cubed square root of t. As you're looking at this, I think it's nice to kind of keep going back and forth to the square root means the 1 half power. 
So the square root of nine, just think of that as three, but then if I'm thinking of s to the fourth to the one half, I know four times a half just gives me two. And then t to the seven to the one half is like t to the 3.5. So the three part was my t cubed that I have right here. And then the 0.5 part is the part that's still left under the radical. So I can see how this can come from the exponent as well, and I don't always have to write out all the variables and kind of circle them up. Here I have a rational, the square root of 16x to the fifth over 9y squared. So 16 becomes four. That x to the fifth, I'm gonna take x squared out and have one x left over. Square root of nine is three and I just have a y. So again, that x to the fifth, you have to decide how you are going to deal with that. You can kind of group it up as two and two. There's my x and my x. Or you can say x to the fifth to the one half is x to the five halves, which is x to the 2.5. So there's my two that came outside the radical and there's that half that is the square root of x. Cube roots means I'm looking at pairs of three. So I can say cube root of 64, well, that would be four. And the cube root of 729 is nine. Now, I do not think that you have these memorized, right? Like this is grab your calculator, see if you can do it, see if you get a nice number. So let me show you how to do the cube root and the calculator. When you first open the keyboard and look at the radicals, you only see the square root. So you need to go to the functions, scroll down, and it's really at the bottom, I have this nth root. So the nth root you put in three, then I put in 64, and it tells me four. Let's do that again. I'm gonna hit my functions. I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom. There's the nth root. Again, I'm doing three, and this was 729. You might find it easier just to go back to 64, hit the power up, and say this is one divided by three, and then you get the four as your answer. So you have two choices. Use the one that's easiest for you. Let's continue to talk about these radicals as rational exponents. Here I have the seeth root of t. It doesn't even sound good when I say it, but it's t and it's to the power of one over c. The fourth root of x to the 12th. So I have x to the 12th to the 1 fourth. So I want you to think about this. This is a base raised to a power raised to a power. When I raise a power to a power, I multiply 12 times 1 fourth and I get x is cubed. Here I have the fifth root of 32. And maybe, maybe you're lucky and you know that, oh, that's gonna be equal to two. And then I have 2,401 to the one fourth power. And again, maybe you're lucky and you're thinking that's seven. If not, what are we gonna do? Let's go back to Desmos. So we already know, we hit the functions, we go down to the very bottom, we grab that nth root, we put in five and then 32. Or the next one, we could try it as it was, 2401, and the power was one divided by four, and you get seven. Hopefully this is showing you that when you have something you can evaluate, you're supposed to evaluate it. So just because I could write 32 to the one fifth doesn't mean I stop there. I always wanna simplify if possible. So as we continue looking at these radicals, we can do operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, but I want you to remember Nothing special here. Just like we can add five x plus seven x, we can add five squared of x plus seven squared of x. So let's start with five x plus seven x is 12 x. All I had to do was add the coefficients. Same thing here, five squared of x, seven squared of x, I add the coefficients, I get 12 squared of x. If that was bigger, like nine squared of three x plus four squared of three x, nine and four is 13, I have squared of three x. 6 squared of xy minus 2 squared of xy, 6 minus 2 is 4, and I leave the squared of xy. So not a big deal to add, subtract, divide them, multiply, whatever, it's just make sure they're like terms. As we get to multiplication though, I do want you to see, we'll see some differences, we'll see some better simplification. So I'm gonna change these to rational exponents. Squared of x is x to the 1 half. Cube root of x is x to the 1 third like bases, say add the exponent. So I have x to the one half plus one third. This is x, one half is three over six, one third is two over six, so my final answer is x to the five over six. So we have to do a little bit of adding of fractions, but that'll be okay. I'll show you a shortcut in a minute. Here's another one, I have four 
square root of x cubed times 5 cube root of x squared. So there's 4. I have x cubed to the 1 half. I have 5 x squared to the 1 third. So I'm really paying attention to you. say what the radicand was first, then do the power. So let's look at 4 times 5. That's my easy part. That's 20. x cubed to the 1 half is x to the 3 halves. x squared to the 1 third is x to the 2 thirds. I need to add 3 halves plus 2 thirds. So 3 halves plus 2 thirds. I'll show you the long way. Common denominator would be 6, so I need to multiply this by 3 over 3. The 2 over 3 needs to multiply by 2 over 2. This says 9 over 6. This says 4 over 6, which is 13 over 6. My answer is 20x to the 13 over 6. Now, a calculator can help me, but it's only going to help in pieces, right? It's not going to know that the square root of x cubed is x to the 3 halves. It won't know the cube root of x squared is x to the 2 thirds. But if you can get that far, you can have the calculator do 3 halves plus 2 thirds. So I'm going to type in 3 divided by 2 plus 2 divided by 3. And it doesn't look like it did it, right? But when I hit this little button, it changes it back to a fraction. So that's your key. Just turning this button on and off goes between decimals and fractions, so it's a nice, quick little way to check yourself or to just do the exponents. If you are worried because you're like, oh, I can't have a calculator in the future or on my test or something, most calculators have this function. Um, it kind of looks like this. I would say this FD appears on a lot of Texas instruments, say like TI-30, X2S, um, and then you see something similar, SD, when you're looking at a bunch of Casios. If you have like a TI-83, um, you just hit math and you hit enter twice. So again, this is on most calculators. You just have to know how to find it. But the math enter enter is it comes to a math thing. It says it's a fraction. You're converting to a decimal. It does it real quick. All right, so let's try um, the same thing, but let's do division. So this is x to the 1 half. This is x to the 1 third. I have x to the 1 half minus 1 third, right? We're subtracting. 1 half is 3 over 6. 1 third is 2 over 6. So I get 1 over 6. So x 1 over 6 is my answer. One last one. I have x to the 4 fifth minus x to the 2 thirds. So I go, okay, I know what to do. I'm going to subtract the exponents. I'm going to do it the long way because I think it's always good to see more fractions if you can. So I'm going to multiply 3 over 3. I'm going to multiply 5 over 5. So this is 12 over 15 minus 10 over 15, which gives me 2 over 15. So my answer is x to the 2 over 15. But one more time, let's go to Desmos once more. So let's try the fractions one more time and Desmos, 4 divided by 5. Notice you have to kind of click your arrow over. You don't want to stay on the bottom. You want to click over. Minus 2 divided by 3. Here's my fraction. And then I click the little double boxes. There's 2 over 15. I hope that was a good review of radicals. I hope it makes you feel more comfortable with them. And if you don't, that's okay. Like we're going to have plenty of practice. As we go through college algebra, there's always a lot of talk about fractions and radicals and rationals. So we'll have plenty of chance to do it. You'll find repetition as the key to getting math. It'll really solidify it for you the more times you do it. So as you do the homework and you do the quizzes, you'll start to see that you're getting familiar with it. So good luck.